Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is John Prince, and I'm Jack Prince's son. I am narr narrating today's memorial concert. It's not a funeral. Uh, we held a funeral last year, a uh, very small funeral. And my remarks are not meant as a eulogy. My father was a planner. He planned out the music for his funeral. He, he selected mostly his beloved organ music. He also planned out the hymns for his funeral. He um, had a few other instructions, including an instruction that was probably directed at me that there would be no eulogy, so this is not a eulogy. <laughs> He also said that he would not be there to say anything <laughs> if we changed it around a bit, so we could do whatever we liked. <laughs> so this afternoon we will go some ways to honoring my dad's requests, mostly by providing a venue for Charles Sullivan to play some lovely organ pieces, many of dad's choosing. and. Um, some piano pieces, including some works accompanying a uh, lifelong, lifelong family friend, Jenny Gettle. We do have one request. We'd like to ask you to refrain from clapping in between the pieces. Hold your applause till the end. Thank you. Along with Bach, Paul Mons was one of Jack's favorite church composers.
Jack Prince was born in 1923 in Sioux City, Iowa, to a musical family. His mother sang and his father played several instruments, including violin, piano, he played stride piano and ragtime, uh, the pipe organ, and the calliope, which was towed along in Schreiner parades. They were enthusiastic supporters of Jack when he started playing piano, and Jack quickly became one of his teacher's prized pupils. As a teenager, he learned pipe organ at his church. He was an unusual teen who would practice two to four hours a day. I remember in high school hearing, and casually applying no pressure or guilt whatsoever, to, upon his kill, kids, uh, that he would rush home from school every day so that he could practice the piano. <laughs> Uh, he also played the trombone and baritone horn in the high school band, so he, he was all in from the start. Jack was a wise man. He knew his abilities and decided not to pursue music as a career, a uh, very, very challenging career, uh, but instead uh, studied engineering at Iowa, uh, Iowa State University. While at Iowa State, the school offered no music courses for credit, so instead he studied organ outside of the college curriculum. He also played in the trombone, in the marching band, and his whole life he loved to be an accompanist. He accompanied glee clubs and choruses and directed his fraternity chorus. I actually have a photo that you'll see later at our reception of Jack with the award-winning senior uh, Phi, Delta, uh, Phi Delta Theta uh, Glee Club. Um, in the spring of 1948, as a senior at ISU, Jack was invited to direct a combined band and chorus performance at Star of Asia, the Star of Asia Festival, which some of you might not have heard of, so let me tell you a little about it. For all of you who did not attend Iowa State after 1922, the Star of Asia uh, was a Bright of Spring presentation, week-long, college student-led presentation that ended with this Star of Asia performance on the Saturday night. Jack was chosen to direct a performance of a combined chorus and um, orchestra in a cantata known as Ballad for Americans, and it's sometimes known as Ballad for Uncle Sam by John Latouche and Earl Robinson. Including three years away in the Army for World War II, he graduated Iowa State in 1948. Got an engineering job at the University of uh, uh, Wisconsin Electric Power Company here in Milwaukee. Naturally, in his early years, he accompanied and then directed the company chorus. Since the 1940s, Jack's musical life has intertwined with Christ Church in White Wisconsin. In 1949, he became its organist and later its choir director. The church is let's say, also responsible for our family. Um, in the early 1940s, a woman affiliated with Christ Church in Whitefish Bay moved from there to Appleton, Wisconsin, and met my mother, Martha, in the church choir there. When Martha moved to Milwaukee, that same woman arranged for Martha to meet Jack Prince, and eventually, in 1955, they got married, and. Uh, that led to 65 wonderful years of marriage and three very, very lucky children. While he was choir director at Christ Church, the choir performed Bach's Christ Lag in Todelsbach. Charles will now play a portion of it.
suffering the fate of all Mormonists, which is that you get to hear them but not see them. <laughs> so we were invited them out to switch over to the piano for a while. I was born in 1961, and in 1962, I'm sure I had nothing to do with this, um, and Jack decided that the volunteer organist choir director gig was a bit too much, along with starting a um, young family, establishing his, their home in Mequon, and also having a day job as an engineer. Um, when he when he left, you also get a chance to see this. I'll do this. Um, Christchurch gave him a uh, engraved plate for many years of devoted service. Um, that's dated 1962, oh, except you can't read it because it was upside down. Um, he told Christchurch that they needed to hire a professional organist and choir director, and that led to a long and fruitful relationship between Christchurch and a dear friend, uh, Trudy Stillman, family friend, and and Jack and, and Trudy were, were devoted friends. At Christ Church, he continued to fill in from time to time when an extra hand was needed or when the church was between organists or was summer. In 1968, the church presented a major musical event that he and most of his family, including my sister Mary and me, participated in called Noah's Flood by Benjamin Pippen. This one-act theater production operetta um, included the, pretty much the whole parish with the children as animals in the ark. Our uh, soloist, Jenny Vogel, uh, now Gettle. <laughs> hey, I knew her as well. Okay. Um, uh, danced the part of the dove in some performances, and my sister Mary danced the part of the dove in other performances. I was a very, very fine lady book. <laughs> Many years later, when Jenny was choir director at Christchurch, she put on Noah's Blood again. So here is a bit of that music.
In our house, he built a, a pipe organ, as one does, <laughs> using various used parts taken from other organs, which we call the beast in the basement. It had about 350 pipes, many of them laid horizontally because the ceiling was only seven feet tall and the pipes are, you know, sometimes 16 feet long. He enjoyed assembling it and played it for quite some time, so they didn't have to get in the car and ride to an organ to practice. Um, but a basement is a terrible place to build an organ, as we all know, um, because it's either too wet or it's too dry, and it was always it was always requiring repair. So when he got a beautiful Steinway piano, very much like that one, um, he. Um, decided to remove the organ, and as many of you know, though, his, he was very handy with that sort of stuff, so he helped select many of the components of the organ that's now been constructed at, Saint Ch at, at uh, Christ Church, a very lovely instrument, and he also, I believe, had a hand in selecting this organ as well. After his retirement from Wisconsin Electric, in 1987, Jack pursued music in many directions. He studied for the exam to be a colleague of the American Guild of Organists, which included uh, sending taped pieces of, of organ uh, works that he performed and then demonstrating his ability to improvise on hymn tunes and that sort of thing. He also studied jazz piano and learned the fundamentals of jazz improvisation. He substituted as, at as many as nine different parishes of many different denominations, including Jewish, Catholic, and many different Protestant faiths. This required learning many different liturgies, uh, liturgies along with many different organs, because of course every organ is actually unique. He played for many weddings, including mine and my wife Pat's, and uh, maybe maybe one or two other people in here. Um, he also went back to playing the baritone horn, which is also known as a euphonium. My mother reminded me of a story on the way to a musical elder hostel program in New Mexico. Martha would drive and Jack would sit in the back seat with his euphonium, practicing so that he could, if you're, if you're a, a, a horn player, you have to have your lip, so he could get his lip back. And they had a few hours to drive from here to New Mexico, so that allowed him time to get his lip back. For years in his 80s, uh, he joined summer bands in uh, Cedarburg and later in White Beach Bay. And he was also a member of the Lakeshore Symphonic Band. Our neighborhood, North Ferry Chasm in Mequon, used to have musical gatherings of various kinds as well, which led Jack to start the Ferry Chasm Marching Band to perform on the 4th of July. Here are the rules, and I think they might still be the rules today. Any neighbor of any age may uh, assemble at noon on the 4th of July uh, with any instrument. They practice for 15 minutes. <laughs> Music handed out by Jack. Uh, then they played for the assembled friends um, and rang, raised the flag. And then, of course, march, because it's a marching band. They march one block. <laughs> Over the past few decades, Jack has turned his attention back to the piano and studied with several teachers. He was very much in demand. He met string players who came to our house to play quartets and quintets. At the age of 88, he began presenting piano concerts on his birthday, and then because he liked it so much, he could do them on his half birthday, <laughs> along with other performers. He continued these both at our house and after 2014 here at St. John's until he was 95. He loved collaborating with talented musicians 
He loved the interplay between different instruments, including and especially the human voice as an instrument. We are now going to give you a series of five pieces, Mendelssohn, Schubert, Mozart, with Charles on piano and Jenny performing.
two of his good friends, Jenny Gettle and Charles Sullivan, for performing some of the music that meant so much to him. Jenny, could you come up? members of Jack's immediate family who are here today. Martha, you want to stand up? You, you don't have to. Everyone knows you are. <laughs> My sister Mary Prince. My sister Sarah Fry. Steve Fry and Jillian and Mary. Hi, Pat. My wife just arrived from here. She could also be here today. So, but first, please stand as you are able um, and join us in singing one of Jack's requested hymns. Now, thank we all our God. Uh, words are printed.
on the uh, terrace, although all the fixings and stuff are inside. And you can go out this door around that way, or out this door around that way, or just think that way, or follow the maddening crowd. <laughs>